Our topic today is properties of line segments. And our goal, I can find the length of a line segment if I know the endpoints of the line segment. So we're going to start by um, drawing out uh, a diagram with the endpoints and actually finding it using the Pythagorean theorem. And then we're going to take a look and see if I can use the coordinates to find the lengths of sides instead of just graphing it, because graphing it is kind of a pain in the butt. So we'll start with the length of a line segment. Draw the length of a line segments with endpoints 2, 1. So here's our A, which has coordinates 2, 1, and B, 4, 6. So that would be up here. B is 4, 6. So now we're going to draw on that line segment. And that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find that line segment that goes from A to B. So the instructions I have here say draw a right triangle that has AB as its hypotenuse. So I'm going to draw on this right triangle. And now I'm going to figure out the horizontal side and the vertical side of the right triangle. And I'm just going to count it right there on the diagram. So the horizontal side has one, two, two units length. And the vertical side has one, two, three, four, five units length. And now we're just going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And remember, the Pythagorean theorem says that the square of the hypotenuse, which in this case is AB, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So in this case, we have the horizontal side is two units, so I need to take two squared. And the vertical side is five units, so I take five squared. And then I need to follow my order of operations, so that gives me four plus 25 which equals 29. And I know that that's AB squared, so in order to find AB, I need to take the square root of 29, and I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to bother changing it into a decimal. Uh, it's going to be 5 point something, but we'll just leave it as the square root of 29. Now, let's see if we can find a way to relate the coordinates of the two endpoints to those lengths of the horizontal and vertical side. So I want you to notice the coordinates of the endpoints. Here, if we take a look at the two x coordinates, uh, and I subtract them, I, if I take 4 and subtract 2, so if I take x2 and subtract x1, I get 2, which happened to be the length of the horizontal side. So that's kind of neat. Uh, and if I take a look at the y coordinates, if I take 6 and subtract 1, I get 5, which happened to be the length of the vertical side. And that's actually no coincidence. If I take y2 and subtract y1, I get the length of the vertical side. So now let's go back up to uh, this formula here. Horizontal side squared plus vertical side squared equals AB squared. And we're going to develop a formula for that. So AB squared equals the horizontal <laughs> equals the horizontal side squared plus the vertical side squared, which in this case, the horizontal side is x2 minus x1. So I'm going to take x2 subtract x1, and of course we have to square it. And the vertical side is y2 minus y1. And of course I have to square it. And that is ab squared. Now that in and of itself is enough to give us um, a formula that we can find. This is a formula for finding ab uh, squared. If I want to find just AB or the length of AB, I say the length of AB is the square root of X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 
minus y1 squared. And this gives us the length of line formula that we're going to use now in a couple of different questions. So our example number one says, find the length of the line segment with endpoints B, negative 6, 5, and C, 4, negative 3, by both A, graphing, and B, using the formula you developed in the previous question. Does the formula work for this question? Well, let's take a look using just Pythagorean theorem on the graph first. So let's graph it. Uh, if I'm going to go graph B, I need negative 6 and 5 is right here, and that's point B. Um, C is 4, negative 3, so it's right there. So you can see it spans across the quadrants, unlike the last question, which was only in quad 1. So now we'll draw on that, and I want to um, draw in the right angle triangle so I can use Pythagorean theorem. So there's my right angle triangle, the right angle here. And so now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 units on that side, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units on that side. So by Pythagorean theorem, And we'll just use the standard c squared equals a squared plus b squared, where c squared is the hypotenuse. Um, my a and b are going to be 8 and 10, so I need 8 squared plus 10 squared, which equals 64 plus 100, or 164. And then, of course, I need to take the square root, so I get c equals the square root of 164. Now I'm going to do it using that formula that we developed in the last one. That formula said that BC is going to equal the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So let's take a look. Our x's are 4 and negative 6. Now be careful when you're dealing with negatives and you're subtracting, um, signs are going to change. So 4 subtract negative 6 is going to be 4 uh, plus 6. And then y2 minus y1 is going to be negative 3 subtract 5. So plus a negative 3 subtract 5 squared. And that's going to give us uh, 4 plus 6 is 10 squared is 100. And negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. And when I square negative 8, I get positive 64. So altogether that is the square root of 164. And these two things are the same, so yes, the formula works. So we have just shown here that the formula works even when it's not all in one quadrant. It can cross quadrants and everything else. So all we really need to know are the endpoints, and we're able to find the length of the line segment. So we're going to do that for these two questions. It says find the length of the following line segments with the following endpoints. So AB, I'm going to find the length of AB by using this handy dandy formula x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now it doesn't matter which point you call x2, I usually choose the second one that's written. So in this case, my x2 is going to be the 5 and my x1 is going to be the negative 2. So 5 subtract negative 2 is 5 plus 2. 
getting rid of the double negatives. And now I have to do the y's, which is going to be 7 minus 4. So plus 7 minus 4 squared. Of course, that's all square rooted. 5 plus 2 is 7, so 7 squared. Plus 7 minus 4 is 3 squared. That gives us 49 plus 9, which gives us the square root of 58. And I'm just going to leave it at that. We can have an approximate answer if we wanted to, but we can leave it as the square root of 58. If you want to know it in its approximate answer, just plug in square root of 58 into your calculator. Now I want to find the length of CD. And I'm going to do that exactly the same way. The length of CD, and that's what these two bars around it means. Those two bars mean length of. So the length of CD is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, all square rooted. And now once again, it does not matter which we choose to be our x2, as long as if I choose this one to be my x2, then this one is my y2. If I chose this one to be my x2, then this one is my y2. They just have to both come from the same point. Usually for the x2, I choose the one that's listed second. So in this case, I'm going to have 7 subtract 5. 7 subtract 5 for my x's. And negative 11 subtract 0 for my y's. Now, 7 subtract 5 is 2, so I need 2 squared, plus negative 11 subtract 0 is negative 11 squared, which gives me 4 plus 121. Now, that's positive 121, because any time I square a negative number, I get a positive number. And so this turns into the square root of 125. And once again, I'm just going to leave that as the square root of 125. Now the next question asks us, uh, a triangle has vertices A5, 7, B6, negative 11, and C, negative 8, 4. Is it equilateral, isosceles, or scalene? So we need to remember what equilateral, isosceles, and scalene mean. And it has to do with the lengths of the sides. So an equilateral triangle has all sides that are exactly the same length. An isosceles has two sides that are the same length. And a scalene has all three sides of different lengths. So we need to find the lengths of the sides and just compare them. Are two of them equal? Are all three of them equal? Or are they all different in order to do this question? So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of give a rough sketch of this triangle. So I've got 5, 7 is my A. And this is just to organize my thoughts more than anything else because it's not an actual diagram uh, or an accurate diagram. It's just a rough sketch. So B is 6, negative 11. So it's going to be down here somewhere. And C is negative 8, 4. So it's going to be over here somewhere. And now I'll draw on that triangle. And we really can't tell from a rough sketch whether it's going to be equilateral isosceles or scalene. But I can go through finding the length of each side and, and then do a comparison. So there we have all of the side lengths of this triangle. I just applied the formula. And be very careful when you're um, subtracting negatives. You'll see that in a couple of spots that when I subtracted a negative, like right here, I end up adding. So be careful of things like that. But you can see that I have the square root of 325, the square root of 421, the square root of 178. Those three numbers are completely different, so this must be a scalene triangle. So we say since 
all sides are different. The triangle is scalene. And that concludes today's lesson.